This is Algebra 1, Lesson 10-16, Number of Solutions to Quadratic Equations. Today's date is Thursday, April 30th, Ooh, April 30th, 2020. Our objective today is to use the discriminant to determine the number of solutions to quadratic equations. So because we don't really know what this word discriminant means, let's talk about it first. And to do that, we are revisiting the quadratic formula. So again, if I have a quadratic formula set up correctly where I have ax squared plus bx plus c, that means that our x squareds are, or the x's are in descending um, powers. It's going by highest degree term, next lowest degree term, next lowest degree term. Um, if I'm looking at their coefficients, the a, b, and c, and no x's, to solve for x, and you can sing the song with me too if you want, x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is the quadratic formula that we talked about in our last lesson yesterday, 10-15. The discriminant is actually part of the quadratic formula, just like another part of the quadratic formula will give you the vertex of, or the x-coordinate of the vertex. So what we want to analyze right here is this b squared minus 4ac. The name of that equation, that formula, is the discriminant. Discriminant. And it's kind of an important value because think about this. What happens if all of this stuff in here, I don't know what the numbers are, but what happens if all of it is zero? Then this is saying plus or minus zero. And adding zero and subtracting zero is the same thing. So if the discriminant is zero, then I only have one answer. And what happens if I have a, a negative under here? If I have a negative, then I have the square root of like, I don't know, I'm just making up a number now, negative 17. If you try this on the calculator, it'll say domain error or error, some sort of error because you can't take the square root of a negative number. What number times what number, what number times itself, it looks like a smiley face, <laughs> what number times itself is equal to a negative? And you can't do that, well, not until you do high level maths, right? But that means that there's no solution if I have a negative, and if I have a positive, then just like before on yesterday's homework, you'll get two answers. So the value of the discriminant tells you the number of solutions, and you can see that graphically as well. So let's go ahead and define all these things. So if the discriminant is positive, if the discriminant is negative, or if the discriminant is zero, what's gonna happen with the number of solutions? And as I said, if it's positive, it's just like what we, have, what we had in yesterday's homework. Uh, we have two solutions. I'll just, I don't know why I was gonna write two solutions. I'll just say two. If it's negative, there are no solutions. And if it's zero, we have exactly one solution because you're doing plus or minus the same number. What does that look like graphically? That's gonna be the first few example problems that we have. So if I have a positive discriminant, I have two solutions. So you can have a graph that looks, um, if that's my graph paper, then I can have a graph that looks like that, right? It intersects the X axis at two spots, or maybe it can be upside down. It doesn't really matter either way. I can have something that looks like that. The only thing that matters is how many times are you intersecting this x-axis? That will tell you the zeros, or it'll tell you the number of solutions. In this case, there are two zeros. It intersects this x-axis twice. So when the discriminant is negative, you're having a graph that looks like one of these two graphs, where I have a quadratic that doesn't intersect the x-axis, or it doesn't intersect it maybe pointing down the other way. There's no intersection. It never crosses the x-axis, as I said. So how do you get one solution? And it's when it touches just one. So you can probably just go ahead and graph that as well on your own. How do you graph a quadratic or a parabola on this graph that only touches the x-axis once? Well, I could do one like that, that touches once right there. Or I could do it uh, facing down, I guess. It doesn't really matter if it's going up or down. It only matters, oop, it's a little bit too high. It only matters how many times it touches or goes through the x-axis. Okay, so now we have all the information that we need to solve these problems. So let's try it out. In example number one, um, we have a graph over here. We don't have any equation. And I need to know, is the discriminant of whatever this function f of x is, is it positive, zero, or negative? And it intersects twice, so it's positive. It's just going off of the table. Uh, what about example two? Is Oh, and I should point out, um, just the fact that this is going, it's concave down, it's pointing down, does not mean it's negative. The only thing that affects the fact that this is a, a positive discriminant is the fact that there are two zeros. I don't care 
if it's facing up or down for this lesson. Um, in the future lessons, we will care more about that. But when I'm just talking about the discriminant, I only care about intersection points with the x-axis. All right, so this one intersects just at one spot at negative four comma zero. So if it intersects at one spot, that means I have to do plus or minus zero, so the discriminant is zero. Again, it doesn't matter if it's facing up or down. Um, example number three. Now we have a function. So negative three x squared plus four x minus two. Notice that it's in the correct form. It has descending degrees. It gets uh, x squared, then x, and then a constant term. So it's in the right form. We don't have to change anything around, which is nice. And I need to find the discriminant. And if you memorize the quadratic formula, you've also memorized the discriminant. So um, square root of uh, b squared minus 4ac. OK, so I do have to sing it. So how do we plug things in? OK, so 4 is b. So I can come down here and say 4 squared minus 4 times, OK, a is uh, this negative 3. So negative 3 uh, times c. And c is negative 2 in this case. So negative two and just simplify this and then I'm done and then there's a the next question that's based on this question right so um, four squared is gonna be 16 um, negative times negative times a negative is a negative um, three times two is six six times four is 24 and 16 minus 24 is negative eight so my final answer is negative eight is the value of the discriminant okay and then since it's a negative value, we can go on and ask the next question, how many x-intercepts does that graph have? And because I have a negative discriminant, there are no or zero x-intercepts. And it's because we have a negative discriminant, right? So I can even write that because negative discriminant. Um, let's try another one. Um, so I have this function, it's g instead of f now. Um, what is the value of the discriminant? Square root of b squared minus 4ac. Okay, so b squared is going to be negative 12 squared. So in fact, this negative doesn't really matter because it's going to be squared. It'll always be positive. Minus 4, a is 4, c is 9. Okay, so I have some big multiplication happening here. Um, well, negative times negative is positive, so 12 squared is just uh, 144. So positive 144 minus, okay, and it is going to be minus because they're all positive over here. Um, what's the easiest way to do this one? I'm going to probably do um, uh, 4 times 9. I'm just going to go at random. 4 times 9 is 36, and 36 times 4. 6 times 4 is 24. Carry the 2. 3 times 4 is 12. Plus 2 is 14. 100, oh, 144. It's the same number. 144. So when I subtract the 2, I get 0. So the discriminant is 0. And we know when the discriminant is 0, that means we have 1 x-intercept. And why? It's because the discriminant is 0. And I don't, you don't have to write this in Khan Academy, but I just want to explain where I'm coming from in my notes. Discriminant is 0. Cool. And that's all I have for you guys. So that concludes Algebra 1 Notes 10-16. I'll see you guys tomorrow.